Hey everyone, this is Chris with Data Driven Labs. Today we're going to go ahead and talk about the new WordPress 5.0, also known as the Gutenberg update. There's a lot of new things that have come out with this new update, and we want to kind of run through and explain how to create a post using the new WordPress 5.0, also known as Gutenberg. With the new WordPress 5.0, there's a lot of new features that have changed. The biggest thing is going to be the classic editor. Instead of using the normal editor that you've used in the past, we're now going to have a new editor to use. To go over this new editor, uh, we're going to go ahead and click on Post. We're going to create a new post here. Let's go ahead and add new post. And then we're going to give this new post a, a title. Okay, so now that we've created a title for this new post, I want to show you around the new editor a little bit before we start to dive in to the different features of WordPress 5.0. As you'll notice, it's now more of a full screen experience. And all of your information is going to still be over here on the left hand side, but everything's going to be included over here. So we have our information on our blocks and on our document. And you'll notice these are similar to what was in the previous WordPress 4.0. Here we can see our permalink. We can select what category we want to put this into, add any tags that we want to add, set our feature image, set our excerpt, and set our discussion uh, options. In addition to, to the items over on the right side of the screen, which, are gonna, which we can get rid of by hitting the settings button, if you don't see it, you can always click on the settings buttons to pull it up. We also have these new items across here. This is where we can add a block, undo anything we've done, redo anything. And then we can also see information about our post. Since we have nothing in here, there's nothing to see yet, but there will be some as we move forward. So first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and add some text here. So the first thing we do is just click right inside here. And then we're going to come up, and I'm going to go ahead and just generate some text real quick. And we'll add this in so we create a paragraph. Now you'll see we have a full paragraph added in here. And inside of here, what we have is we still have the ability to bold certain items, italicize certain items. If we want to create a link, we can go ahead and highlight, create a link. And just like that, we have created a link. This is very similar to the old editor. You'll notice there's a lot less options, uh, but we do still have plenty of items available here. A lot of those options have moved over into the block settings. So here you can see we can change the size of our text. We can add a drop cap. We can adjust the colors. This would be our background color, for example. Or we can adjust our text color. We can also add additional CSS classes. Now that we have explored the paragraph block, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other blocks that we have available to us. So to access the other blocks when you're working on a new block, you can always just hit enter and you're going to start a new block, or we can hit this add a uh, new block and search for different blocks. You'll see we have a lot of different blocks here. We're going to run through a couple of these so that we can understand them a little bit better. So for example, if we wanted to add an image, we can create the image block. And you'll notice that it creates, it drops in this new block that has the ability for us to upload an image. For this example, we're going to upload an image we have on our hard drive. We're going to hit the upload button. We're going to go find the photo that we want to place inside of here. Let's go ahead and pull one of these photos from my most recent vacation. We'll grab this photo here. What you'll see next is it'll upload the image and it'll put the image into the, uh, into the editor. We can add a caption. And we can also do a couple other things with this image. So we can go ahead and we can align the image left, align the image right. We can center the image. Some of the new features you have available, especially if your theme supports it, is you have the ability of doing a wide width, which breaks the width outside of the frame. Or you have the ability of doing full width, which now makes your photo go full width. For this particular photo, we are going to stick with the wide width. 
Now, the Gutenberg editor is going to give us some options or some uh, choices of other things that we can add similar to what we just added. For In this case, we want to go ahead and add another uh, header. So let's go ahead and click Add Block. And we can search through here. We see headings right here. But one of the things I want to show you is you can actually search for blocks. So we start to type in heading. And here is the heading. So we can select a heading and we can say header. And we can make this an H2, an H3, an H4, or however, whatever type of header you want to make. Over here in your right side, you have the ability to control in the settings for this header. For example, you can change it to be a centered, uh, right aligned, left aligned, whichever one you want. And under advanced, you also have the ability of creating an anchor tag. Anchor tags would be useful if you want to create links to go to these different items. And so you can add the anchor tags over inside the advanced section. And just like you can with any other blocks, you can add additional CSS classes. Now that we added a header, we're going to go ahead and add another block. So here it's going to, again, suggest different blocks that we can add. We're going to come over here and we're going to add, let's say we want to add a quote. So we're going to go ahead and add in a quote. And then we're going to come over here and we're going to add in, let's say we want to add another paragraph. And then we're going to go ahead and preview this so we can see what this looks like. Now, as you can see, all of our items have been placed in here. We have a nice wide photo coming in. And we have all of our different items formatted and uh, based off of the different blocks that we used. When we come back over to the edit screen, let's go ahead. I want to show you what this looks like if we go ahead and make this full width. Let's go ahead and preview. And you'll see that this comes out to a nice full width photo. So if you're looking and being able to kind of make things look a little different, you have the abilities of changing up how each of these different items work. Now, let's go ahead and add a new block. I want to show you how the cover image works. So when we add cover, we'll create a new uh, item down here. We'll hit upload. We'll pick a different photo. Let's, uh, let's go with this uh, person surfing right here. And then we're going to write in our title. So let's say, surfs up. Then we have the ability with this one to also make it full width if we like, or wide width, just to kind of go with the same flow we're doing. We're going to go full width on this one. Then we're going to come back down here and let's add in a list. So we'll go ahead and say, list item one, list item two, list item three. Now with the list, we have the ability uh, to add any extra, extra classes we want. Uh, there are other blocks that we, you can download as plugins that give you a little bit more options to these, but these are your basic lists uh, that you can add in just with Gutenberg out of the box. So now let's take a look at different columns that we can build into, uh, into this uh, set section. So for one, we can do a media and text. This will allow us to upload a photo. So let's say we wanted to upload this picture of the dock. Open. And then we can come over here and we can write a little bit about this. Now again, with this, we do have some settings available. We can switch the side. Uh, we can say we want this one over here. We can go ahead and we can make it full width. So now it comes over full width. This is one of my favorite parts right here. This ability to make this full width so that it does take up one whole side of the screen. So we're going to go ahead and make this uh, just like this. And we'll go ahead and add uh, one more thing. We'll go ahead and say, uh, we'll just add this photo is in black and white. And then we can actually play with other options with, within this as well. So we can come in here and set color settings. We want to make this background. You know, let's make this uh, blue so it stands out a little bit more. And uh, we'll keep the text color as white. And uh, maybe we'll add a drop cap. Mm, maybe not. It looks a little weird on that one. Uh, we can also adjust the size. So we can make this huge, uh, small. 
you can actually put our own custom size in here. Uh, let's go with uh, me. Oops, size 70. Oh, that might be a little bit. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and stick with maybe 50, 55. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like now with a preview. So now, as you see, we have our paragraph. We have our full screen image. This image is a little blurry because this image wasn't made to be blown up this big. Um, so you need to make sure you use higher quality images. Uh, here is our cover image. And then here's that peer image. So you can really see, you can really use the whole screen. Um, and it is responsive and, uh, and, and all that. So it really does work out with this new is, uh, editor as long as you have a theme that does support the Gutenberg editor. Now let's go back over here and keep working on our demo. Okay, let's take a look at adding in columns. So we've added in the media with the uh, content to the side, but let's go ahead and add in actual columns. So we're gonna come over here, we're gonna select columns. And what we can do is you can actually click, and I click outside here, so you can actually uh, select the columns. And uh, I can sometimes go a little bit more than this. Uh, and then what we can do is we can actually adjust how many columns we're gonna have. So let's say we wanna do, uh, we'll do three, we'll do three columns here. So we have column one, oops, column two, and column three. Now each of these columns are actually their own blocks. So you can see that we can actually switch these blocks if we wanted to to be a different type of block. Um, you know, make the middle one be a quote. So this can actually be a quote. And we can make the other columns be other items as well. Uh, within the columns themselves, so if we click outside here, we have the ability to make them full screen, wide, uh, we're going to keep them as wide. And uh, let's go ahead and preview this to see what that looks like. And here you'll see they went ahead and they spaced out properly across the site. Sometimes uh, you'll notice, uh, and this stuff will hopefully be changed along the way, but you'll notice inside the editor, this does not always display the exact way it's gonna display in your page. So make sure you're going back and hitting preview every once in a while to make sure that they are working correctly. All right, so now that we have added in the uh, column block, let's go ahead and just add a few more extra blocks so we can see what they kind of do. Uh, let's say we wanted to add a YouTube video. YouTube and you can just drop the URL right inside of here. So for example, we'll drop one of my videos that I've created uh, previously, hit embed, and then comes the video. This is a video, funny enough, how to use Gutenberg 5.0. With this, we also have the ability of choosing which way we want to go, if we want to go wide width, full width, uh, or center it. Uh, you know, with videos, I normally just center them. Um, I don't want them too big because People can always click out to go in the full screen. It does bring over all the different CSS classes that you would normally have set up, but you can add additional CSS classes in here if you wanted to as well. I always leave resize for smaller devices. This way it can actually kind of shrink it down for using mobile devices and other devices such as that. If you wanted to add a photo gallery, you can come over here. Let's just type in gallery. And then we'll hit upload and let's go and grab a couple of photos. So we'll grab this photo, this photo, this photo, this photo, this photo, hit open. And they will all load in. You'll see they are all coming in. They're kind of large photos, so they do take a second to load in. And then this is where uh, the Gutenberg editor really kind of comes into play. That makes it kind of a really neat feature that it can do. So we can set how many columns we want. So I, I purposely did an odd number so we can show how this works. So if we set three columns, you notice it puts three in here, and then the other ones it size, sizes to fit into the area as well. We did four columns, same thing. We did five columns. There they all are across there. And you'll see kind of how they fill out the whole entire area. So let's go ahead and just leave this as three columns. And you do also have the ability here to go full width as well if you wanted to do that. 
All right, so that's mo that's that's a majority of the main blocks. I do want to go into a couple other really neat features that you have with WordPress 5.0. So first, the one let's go ahead and create just a quick paragraph block, and let's just say this is a fancy um, paragraph that I want to use over and over. All right, so let's go ahead and format this. We're going to make this go ahead and be a blue box. Uh, font size is going to be huge. And that's going to be the center text. And yeah, we're going to drop cap, drop cap for this one. All right, so what we do is we want to, let's say we want to reuse this. We're going to use this on a lot of different things. So this is where uh, Gutenberg, um, WordPress 5.0 Gutenberg has a lot of, uh, a really cool feature that is going to really help out when you're reusing a lot of certain types of uh, blocks throughout your different posts. When you come in here, you have a lot of things. You can duplicate it, you can insert it before, insert after, uh, you can edit it as HTML, or we can add this to reusable blocks. So when you add this to reusable blocks, we'll call this fancy blue paragraph. We'll hit save. And now, next time when you come in here, when we come over here, we can just search for fancy blue paragraph, and there it is. And now we can add this. This will be on any any post that we're doing. We can add this reusable block and use it over and over. This is a really unique feature that makes WordPress 5.0 kind of stand out a little bit different, makes this editor. I know the editor seems a little more difficult than the previous editor, but this really gives it uh, the ability to be used over and over in a production environment. There's also many other blocks that you can add. So I just want to kind of run through the the most used here. We have common blocks. So you have the ability of adding a file that people can download. Obviously, we already added a video, paragraph, cover image, gallery, audio. We can actually do pull quotes. Uh, you can actually add code in. If you need to add code or custom HTML, you can add those in uh, by dropping in one of these blocks. You can add in a table. Uh, you can also do different layout types. You can create buttons. You also have whoops, uh, different widgets. Uh, right now, there's not a whole lot of widgets available, but there will be uh, more of these coming available as uh, developers and plugin developers bring more items in. But we can actually drop this in here, and you can lay out multiple widgets um, to show off different posts that you've made as well. And then, of course, we have our reusable blocks that we've created as well. Any block on here can be saved as a reusable block. So now that we've laid out our page, I did want to come real quick and show you what this info screen up here does. When you hit this, this actually will show you how many words you have, how many different headings, paragraphs, blocks, and it creates a nice outline of your page. This allows you really to see, uh, this allows you really to see the different structure of your uh, document and really kind of understand how your flow works. To give you a quick example of what a full post will look like, um, I pulled up my Data Driven Labs uh, site with a large article. So you'll see when we open up this content structure, you'll see we have a lot of words in here, a lot of headings, a lot of paragraphs, a lot of blocks. But you'll see how it kind of breaks it out and shows the different steps, uh, the different hierarchy of the whole entire document. We also have the ability to see the block navigation and how that works as well. You'll see here this is a very large post, but we utilized a lot of those different elements, bringing in the different photos and also bringing in all our different blocks. So let's go ahead and preview our final. All right, so this is our final uh, post here. You'll see that it's got all of our different items in here. It's got our full screen for our image gallery and our reusable post, as well as pulling in other posts that we've posted as well with the uh, widgets that we added. So this is how WordPress 5.0 uh, Gutenberg works. This is how you create a sample post. Again, your post may look a little different depending on your theme. This is using the new WordPress 2019 theme. Uh, you, uh, depending how your theme is set up, your post may look a little bit different, may not have full screen abilities as well. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and thank you very much for your time.